brother, and welcome everyone to our spoiler review of Avatar The Way of Water. Oh man, I, I honestly, coming into this, I had no idea whether or not like this would fall under the umbrella of things that we would review, but all I can say is that the closer we got to this actually being in theaters, the more I wanted to. Yeah. So it, w it was such a weird approach into the movie because it's like, it's been like, what, like 13 something years yeah. since the first one. It's like, are they just going to try and revive it? Can it possibly live up to the first one? Well, today we're going to find out. Let's dive on in. All right, dude. I are I don't need, I don't feel like we're going to be able to avoid it for very long. So, I'm just going to say like typically when we come out of a movie, like the the go-to staff response is basically just like nod in a circle and then or retreat dissipate. to the cars because like yeah. you and I don't want to discuss the movie too much because we don't want to like let a ton of other opinions in to influence it. We don't want to like waste our first take on something. Yeah, we just okay. want to be able to sit here and have collected our thoughts and give our personal review. Yes, and, and it's so weird how this ends up being the case, but it absolutely is, which is just that like the first time I feel like I ever give my thoughts on something is usually like the most authentic, the most real, and then every time after that, I'm just kind of like trying to remember. Remember. But last night, we walked out of the theater and we're with our crew and I, we're all just kind of looking at each other and I, I, I feel like I could not hold it in. I was like, they just don't make movies like that. They just don't make movies like that, man. Like, it, it is. There's been like one other movie like that and it was the first one. Right, it's like, it, it's so unbelievable and crazy because yeah. it's just like the, the production, what you are going to see is completely and utterly in a league of its own. A like, league of water. A league no. of water. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, I mean, first of all, definitely if you can see it in 3D, like if you're not bothered by the glasses, if you think like, ah, I don't really like the 3D gimmick, not a gimmick. Right, not yeah, a gimmick. It, it definitely is worth it in this particular capacity. Yeah, it totally is. If it doesn't bother you at all, I would totally recommend seeing it in 3D. The whole time I was watching, I was like, man, I super want to go see this in IMAX because like, I feel like like the more the bigger the screen the more in the world you can be the better it's going to be like I think one of the first notes I wrote down when I was talking about it was like I'm not even sure like movie movie doesn't even feel like the right word yeah you know it's, it's like it's much more of like an experience it, it is a lot like an experience it's like and I was even talking to people about this in the theater like while we were buying popcorn and it was like I don't even feel like I'm having the same kind of like anticipation I normally would have for going to see a movie. I feel like I'm going to see like a Broadway play. I feel like <laughs> I'm going to go and see extreme talent on exhibition and like just get to like watch it unfold before me. Mm -hmm. But even beyond that, yeah, you're exactly right. Like if you've ever done Flight of Passage, uh, which is like one of the Pandora Avatar rides at Disney World, yeah. like the movie is a lot like that, yeah. at least in my personal experience. Like like what they were trying to do or like what I think they did a fantastic job of doing was, was literally just like dropping you into the world and like letting you imagine like what it might be like to just go and explore in exactly the same way that the characters are. Um, and they don't hold back. I mean, you get like huge swaths of the movie, which is just literally nothing more than the characters. Like I mean, it could be like the world's most incredible screensaver. Yeah, like, right. Like just watching them explore the world. Some like the the runtime is absolutely like padded by lots of world building and world exploration. But like it's to the movie's benefit. I yeah. would say like yeah. I, this was the other thing I noticed. Like there was like this big scene at you know there's a big like you know action scene fight at the end, which is you know very which is very fun to watch. But like. Like, that was, like, a very traditional kind of, like, oh, yeah, this is the exciting part of the movie. And as I was watching it, I realized, like, I have been entertained the whole movie. Yes. Like, yeah. like there are parts that are really emotional. There are parts that are just, like, looking around and exploring. And then there are parts that are, like, in a big action. And, uh, and, and all of it, all of it is good at all times. Yeah, it's, it's what really... what I felt like. That, I, I definitely agree. I mean, I, I think that, like, what... It's so, like, it's so, it's so, like, careful. It's so considerate. Like, like, every detail, every thing that was created, like, each individual time. I mean, it, it's a lot like, you know, getting lost in a world like, like, 
the Wizarding World or Lord of the Rings, you know, like, yeah. like where once you're in it, you know, there's there's just like all of these like contraptions and things and like ways of life and traditions. And, and it's like, it's packed into every corner of every shop, regardless of like yeah. where you're looking. I think that's also part of why it doesn't feel like, like you're just padding the runtime or something, or like you're just like, or like feels boring because so much of what the movie is about, like is just the culture of the people. Yes. So yeah. even when you're just seeing it unfold, that's like adding to the story. And typically, even when they're looking around, they're showing you things that like will come into play later, but now you've seen it first. Right, right. Yeah, but like at the same time, it's never like, oh yeah, okay, you had to show me that sort of anemone thing because otherwise later I'd be like, where'd that anemone thing come from? Right, yeah. So th yeah. I mean, there's a little bit of like, um, some some like little details where they yeah they, they bring something up early on so that it can be used later. Uh, I will say that the movie has a, a pretty substantial amount of like exposition oh. that is just used like to get you the viewer kind of up to speed on like hey we're not going to spend a whole bunch of time yes. like building backstory. This happened and right. like. We're not really gonna talk a lot about it. Like it just did. Yeah. It, like it. This did happen. Especially the first like fifteen minutes or so. It feels like the movie is extremely aware that it's been like thirteen whatever years since the last one came out, and they're like, look, look, look. The whole rest of the movie is gonna be show don't tell, but we're just gonna make sure that everyone's on the same page real quick. Real quick. Yeah. So like, yeah. Here, here's what happened. That general guy you thought was dead. Guess what? We brought him back, and here's how we did it. Don't ask questions. We good. We good. Next. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. like we basically just like distilled out his brain and memories and all yeah. of those things. We put it on this chip thing that that Me. one guy from the last movie has. That, I thought, so that was clever too. I thought like, that like they're doing the exposition thing where they're just like, this is exactly what happened, audience. Do you get it? But like, they made it a little bit more bearable being like, hey, look, this is a little bit of fan service. Remember the guy from the last movie who died? Here he is again. Look, he's in this movie now too. I think I felt like a shave tail Louie. Right, yeah. Remember? Yeah. Remember? Cool, 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 cool. He's still being a jerk. We good, we good. Yeah. Um, that being said, I would say like, what I know a lot of people have said about the original Avatar film is that, like, for it being one of the highest grossing movies of all time, uh, it obviously ends up falling under the scrutiny of, like, well, you know, if it's so popular, like, what makes it so great? And what makes it so great is, like, the visuals. Is the visuals. Uh, it's the world. It's yeah. the story itself, and this is also true for the original, was effectively the story of Pocahontas. Like, we've, we have heard and seen the story before. It's a pretty simple story that has then been, like, done in a very, 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 very elaborate way. And I would absolutely say that like, stepping into this movie, I felt like the same was also true. It was a bit more complex and convoluted than the first one was. However, I still feel like on the whole, the plot was pretty sim the like, simple. It was, it was a vendetta from the sergeant military dude against Jake Sully. Yeah, that's basically, that's you know? it. Like the, yeah, the plot is extremely straightforward. Yeah. Like the, the even the story beats, it's just like, Oh man, you're an outcast, I'm an outcast. It's like all the things that are setting up, like you can hear them say something and you're like, oh, so later this is gonna happen. It's exactly how it plays out. It's gonna play out how you think it's gonna play out. But like, if you're upset with the plot, like I think you're missing the point. That because like, here's, here's what I thought. It was like, the plot isn't trying to be like crazy and innovative. That's not what's innovative and crazy about the movie. Right. Like, it's like, it's just taking like a lot of very basic story beats and executing them extremely well and then building this crazy world around them. It's like, like the what, what I wrote down is like, is the plot basic? Yes. But is anyone ever upset about extremely well done chocolate chip cookies? No. Right. No, and they're not. That's, that's the thing too, yeah. It's like you, you basically like, the world, everything to do with it and the execution of it is like a 15 out of 10. Like it's, yeah. it's absolutely unbelievable. The plot is like a three out of 10, but it's like, it doesn't really matter because like, again, it's, it's exactly what you said. Like the plot, oh, it's like oddly, and this is again, it's like we said, it's not like a typical movie. It, it's not really the point. Like the point is to go and like live it with these characters Experience. and see it. And like, it, but like that being said though, you know, you go into like any like action sequence ever, like, you know, like a fight scene, like in a Marvel film or something like that. Like you've seen people punch each other. You've seen people throw each other out of windows. I mean, there's, there is excellent in quality choreography, like oh, no yeah. doubt. But like, I think every single time two people attack each other inside of this movie, it is immensely interesting and unique and awesome and different and yeah. fun. It's just like over and over and over again, every single thing that goes down, it's just like, it's like you almost have like an entire group of people whose sole job it was was to make sure that like this one shot that um, uh, Natiri takes 
can be awesome. Yeah. And therefore it is. Oh, man, <laughs> you know? yeah. Like, it, yeah. It does feel like entire teams are dedicated to, like, figuring out, like, how would this work in this world? Or, like, how would they do it? Like, like the whole... There's an entire scene with the, the militarized poaching of the the Tulkan. The t t Tulkan, right? Those are the whales? The whales, yeah. The whales. I mean, they go through it in detail. They, they have do. Jermaine Clements there explaining it to you all the way through. I love his just, inclusion. Like, oh, like, what are you doing? Who's got the harpoon me? now? Yeah. It's <laughs> like... Oh man! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic inclusion of the cast, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's like the, the way they're going through it is like so thought out. It's like they've clearly done it a thousand times. They know exactly what they're doing. It works the same every time. Oh yes. Okay. This is a small thing, like, but you're exactly right. There's a scene where they have these like underwater. Uh, jet things that they're using like for a couple of soldiers to go in and basically be like fighter pilots but like underwater. Yeah. And there's this scene where the soldier gets in and he does this like like almost hands down like scooch over a bench yeah. to get like into the like the captain's seat or whatever. Yeah. And it's like a, I mean it's a blink and you miss it. It's not really that remarkable of like a moment but it's like it's like you the you the viewer is like that guy's done that like a million times. Yeah. You know, like the first time he got in, he probably like awkwardly crawled his way up to like the cabin to where he can like lean forward and like lay down. But instead he does this like like hop jump thing. And I remember thinking like, this guy's done this. He's done it's that. Like he's it's like this it's is good not, detail. Right, exactly. So and I and I felt like that's what you kept seeing, uh, like throughout throughout everything. Uh and the other thing that I thought was amazingly cool, as long as we're on that note, is the contraptions that they came up with, like the robotic, like yeah. like um little militarized underwater things yeah. were really neat because they like they were like a crab. Yeah, like yeah. a crab yeah, is, is a crab. able to effectively move underwater. So like why not make the machine itself a crab thing? Yeah. And it's like, it just absolutely works. Yeah. You know, and it was it, it was super neat to like see that in motion. Yeah, all like the machine technology was extremely creative. And yeah, that like, um, I thought like the the building of the human city, it was like, yeah, one year later, look what we've built. And like, it was it was interesting to me because like, the, the humans land on Pandora and then they immediately jump cut to one year later and they show you the city. I'm like, how on earth are they supposed to have built the whole city in one year? And like, as if they can hear you thinking that, they're like, we have these spider bots and they can put up an entire building in a day. And you're like, wow, okay, yeah, all right. <laughs> Oh, that's how. Oh, that's right. how, yeah. like, we know what you're thinking. I've seen Wally, that yeah. adds up. <laughs> yeah, okay, cool, 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 cool. This is great. Yeah, yeah. so um, um, very, very cool in how they like put everything together. But then, but then, yeah, if you are to dive into like the story, the plot, and, like yeah. spend too much time, ha, good one. Yeah. Um, there, there's absolutely no doubt that I feel like there's there's a couple of like pieces of it that feel less carefully configured. Like for for example, the the basic premise of the movie is that you have this sergeant guy who has been like reanimated as an avatar, and it has all of the memories, and therefore ultimately like discovers the fact that. Uh, Quaritch. Like the, yeah. Quaritch. Yeah. Quaritch. Quaritch. Uh, that yeah. like, um, Jake Sully and his wife have like, you know, killed him in the woods and he's obviously deeply upset about it and yeah. pretty much going to like pledge to just take them down no matter what the cost. And so what Jake and his family do is basically like, you know, take off all of their responsibilities, like their, their like royal appointments, like within the community of like the forest tribe. And they're like, we can't, we can't stay here. It's too dangerous. We must leave in the name of like protecting you, these people here, and our family. So we are going to go really far away to the water tribe. To like we'll be one like, hour away, like yeah. really far away. Really far away. Real, I mean, like, yeah, I was thinking about this this morning. I was like, dude, you had the whole planet and you went like one, one day trip away. <laughs> like, well, yeah, that's yeah. fair, that's fair. I mean, yeah. But either way, so like, you know, yeah. they get there where effectively all they've done is literally changed the location of what would otherwise be the plot of the movie both ways. So it's like, there's there's no doubt about it that they were like, we really want to explore what water life might be like for this particular group of Navi people. So yeah. we're going to change the, the geolocation of the plot to there instead. Right. Um, and But otherwise, like all that Jake <clears throat> has done is endangered those people. Yeah, who, like, cause they're, they're hunting Jake either way and um, they find him and it's just like, well, if you, uh, yeah, you are definitely the reason they are here. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So yeah. like, you know, Jake d he leaves in the name of like protecting his family and the other people and then just endangers a different group of people and still has his own family attacked pretty successfully. So, yeah. um, 
you know, it, it's like when you look at it like from that standpoint, it's like Jake's leaving and going someplace else is probably like irresponsible for a different reason as well. Uh, but then beyond that, you have a multitude of different plots that are sort of unfolding throughout the story, uh, which is kind of interesting, I guess, like to see like what all they might be setting up for the future of this franchise. I did like that because they were definitely introducing a bunch of questions that they're just like, we're going to leave this unresolved. Yes, yes. You're just going to have to wonder. There's absolutely, yes, stuff (laughs) that like needs conclusion. Like stuff where it's like, well, we never got like an answer to that. But like it also, you felt that way with the full knowledge that there will be more of these. And I have a feeling the ultimate payoff is probably going to be pretty cool, especially with the character uh, Sigourney Weaver's new character. Kiri. Kiri. Were they calling her Kitty, or were it's, they? I thought they were calling her Kitty sometimes too. That's okay. what I thought her name was. But I guess I guess her official name is Kiri. Okay, maybe, maybe it was a nickname like that yeah. was just established within the movie. But that's another one of those things where it's like, yes, of course you'd have nicknames for your kids, but like, and it's like that makes the world feel more real. But at the same time, it's hard to understand the names in this foreign, um, non-Earth planet based thing you've got going <laughs> yeah it's, it was a little bit hard to track uh i was even having a little bit of difficulty for a while with the the two sons yeah um because it I, <clears throat> I this is again from like a storytelling perspective i couldn't quite figure which of the sons was supposed to be like the subject of like the movie like where i, I kept thinking like oh it's the older son and you know, he kept being like noble and like standing up for his brother and doing yeah. all this and stuff. And he has like a flashback early on where he's like hunting fish with his dad. And it's like, now that I've seen the movie, I understand the setup. Right. Yes. Uh, like, oh, they showed that scene early on because later it's going to go. Right. But, but otherwise, like the plot, you know, definitely ends up revolving a lot more around the younger son. The younger son. son. Luok. Uh, Luok. Yeah, yeah. Who's also dealing with sort of like his own set of circumstances, which is that like he is feeling as though he is like an outcast within his family um, and then sort of has. As the what is the name of the whales? Oh, the um, mm, the uh, the Tolkun. The Tolkun. Okay, he yeah. ends up having like a very special relationship with like this outcast Tolkun as Pyakon. well. Pyakon. 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 That's is, the name of his whale. Okay. He's Tolkun. Good. I I feel like I feel like this is like a forgive me because I'm sure I will get good at all of these names with time, but at present I'm oh, I still know. sort of reeling from only having seen the movie last night and still kind of in like a catch up mode. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, especially when there's just obvious words in English that you would use, like is there whales? <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the whales. Um, so like, yeah, you sort of have like their relationship that's that's sort of like expanding, and he's sort of like the rebellious son who's like consistently like trying to do the like right things but like keeps finding himself like, a <laughs> bit wrong footed along the way there is such there was so many moments too like there are so many moments throughout the movie where it's just like don't do this and he's like oh, I'm doing it and it's like every single time it seems like you understand sort of where he's coming from but things go horribly wrong and then like it seems like they've gotten to the point of the movie where it's like finally like just stay here and you're like yeah, you should definitely stay there because you just got rescued from a really terrible situation. He's like, I'm going back in. I feel like the whole audience in the theater just like was audibly like, dude. He's like, come on. Come on. Man. Come on. <laughs> just, yeah. But, you know, like obviously ends up being like a big, pretty big driver. <coughs> uh, but then the, the other plot line that's of course going on is what I actually thought was pretty clever the way that they like explained how this came to be is the character of Spider. Yeah. Yeah. Um, who, by the way, I just discovered this as I was researching for the review today. He was actually the bike kid in Avengers Endgame who Scott Lang asked for directions. Oh, okay. On, like, you know, when he like wakes up in the van yeah. or comes back in the van or whatever. Um, so he's actually already made like a multi-billion dollar franchise movie right, uh, yeah. appearance before as a very small role. Right. Um, now here he is. Much bigger is. role. Much bigger role. Um, Spider is effectively like a Tarzan-esque style kid who uh, was born on planet and when the sky people were sent off basically was too young to undergo like the cryogenic like freezing that is necessary for like space travel. Right so he's just sort of stuck there so but also of... not old enough I guess to have an avatar made. Right yeah so then he just ends up effectively you know like being raised by the Navi people and has this like hardcore like you know like allegiance to those people and like has, has really learned how to like hold his own uh, amongst them, which yeah. is like really kind of like neat and interesting. But plot twist. Did you think of... it was obvious from the beginning that that's who he was? I didn't know immediately. Okay. Like okay. as soon as the, as soon as the the um, quartet showed up and they started like, uh, th- then it was pretty obvious right away. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I felt like we saw him and I was like, oh, I know where that's going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it, it, that does add a really interesting dynamic. 
um, it, to that to that situation because I feel like what they're setting up with Quartich over the over the whole series is going to be like a very slow burn on him like becoming a good guy. I think by that, the end, yes, I, I do think that you're right. Like I think that like. And I, the actor, I've even read a little bit about him before, like in the, the first movie, I think he said like, you know, I'm not really the villain, I'm just someone who is like trying his best to do his job. It is my job to keep you alive. I will not succeed. Like his allegiance is to like the people. And right. like interestingly, um, or the sky people, and then interestingly, like his son Spider has like this like very similar characteristic, but like the other way, which is like he has an extreme allegiance towards like the Navi. Right. Um, and so you kind of like end up having it like in, in both directions and like figuring out where it's gonna merge in the middle. But so yeah, then Quartich. Quartich. Um, like obviously now is like in permanent avatar form himself. And Quaritch. His, Quaritch. Uh, has had the ability to go and like start to get, like in the name of attacking them, he has started to actually like see a lot of their way of life. Yeah. Um, like, he has to go do the same thing where he has to, like, get one of the bird creatures and, like, bond with it and, like, tackle it. And, you know, he's going to do it the human way. And then he sort of gets, like, uh, coerced into doing it the hard way, like Jake Sully did. He's like, well, Sully did it the hard way. I'm going to do it, gonna, gonna do it too. I'm going to do it too. But then he, like, er, you know, erupts triumphantly from the clouds and he's like, yeah, this is awesome. It's right, like, right. Yeah, yeah, it is. Right, exactly. Um, yeah, so I can very much see, like, a point in future movies where, like, because they say early on, that like Earth is dying, so they're trying to like basically move the entire population of Earth to Pandora, is what it sounds like. Okay, yeah, and so, or at least as many of them as they can. And I can imagine a point in the in the future where they've been a lot more successful, like the human civilization has started to like expand some, and maybe like their need for this particular Avatar guy is not needed anymore, or they start, or they want to like go like. I don't know, destroy some of the places that he has now grown like accustomed to enjoying or like that uh, at, now that he's Navi himself. Right. Like he's going to like over time, there's no doubt he's going to begin to appreciate aspects of being Navi and certainly the humans are going to start like destroying things that he can no longer take advantage of and then I think that's going to be the the big catalyst. Right. Yeah, the the real big question in my mind is whether or not the the plot of the next film is ultimately going to be the rest of the Navi discovering that Spider saved his father mm -hmm. and through that discovery being like like turning on him and Could whether be. or not then like spider is going to have to f like like possibly like fight alongside his father for for the next installment i could see a scenario where that's sort of like what the groundwork has been laid for i could see it i could see that um and then you know they would have really like someone who has uh, for all intents and purposes been raised by these people and is going to like know their ins and outs better than any other like intel ever could right um so that that to me feels like the obvious setup for what's likely to come in the future. Yeah, I can see them like outcasting him and Jake being like, oh, we shouldn't do that because he can tell them everything and then they do it anyway and it's like 300 where you have the goat herder and he's like, actually, just come around this back way and then we'll get him. Right, yeah. 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 So um, <laughs> the other thing that I think is very interesting uh, to kind of like backtrack a little bit is you have... Um, oh my gosh. Uh, Kiri again, Sigourney Weaver's character. Yeah. So there's a bit of a pretty significant mystery about her character, which mm. is effectively that... Uh, we don't know sort of like how or why like her mother would have like come to have her in the first place because yes. it, it seems like she was born of her mother's avatar. Yeah. Um, who we see, you know, unsuccessfully merge with her human self during the events of the first Avatar film. Right. So, like, what Jake does in the end that does work, that allows him to be like a permanent... Avatar yeah. is like what Sigourney Weaver's character was unsuccessful in, in doing. In right. doing. Yeah. Um, and yet, somehow, there has still been like a baby as a result of it who yeah. has like this very spe uh, special connection uh, with Awa. Yes. Which is kind of fascinating, especially just given like the ceremony at the tree that happened with her mother in the first place. It's like, it does feel like there could be like some immaculate conception type of... And a thousand percent seems like some sort of immaculate conception type thing. Yes. And she is going to have like a very unique and interesting piece of control over um, effectively 
all living things on the yeah. planet of Pandora. So my suspicion is that the big, big, big payoff that's going to happen yeah, eventually movie five. is going to be her effectively <clears throat> having the planet come to life yeah. uh, and and do whatever it needs to do to fight off whatever threat will happen in movie five. Yeah, it feels like for sure. Like by the time you get to movie five, like so far we've had like a uh, tiny human encampment versus tiny Navi encampment. And now we went to like bigger human encampment against like kind of uh, water-based Navi encampment. It's like, I'm sure it's just gonna get bigger and bigger. Yeah, the, the scale <coughs> will, will grow with time. But obviously the interesting bridge that I feel like Kiri then connects is is effectively she is like, she is both both human and Navi. And it feels like cohabitation would be the most likely end goal of, you know, if Earth is in fact dying and all the people on Earth need to go somewhere, and right. this is a viable place for them to go, then my suspicion is that like, the the end of everything, I think, would be everybody living harmoniously on this planet together. Right, like, um, you, at, at the, yeah, as much as the, the humans who are currently there and hunting them like seem like they totally suck. You still don't want the entire human population to die. Exactly. Probably. But but yeah. like you know what would have to happen. What would have to happen most likely with that is also like the human people respecting the the ground under which they are like now standing. Right. Yeah. They have like, to like understand it, which is I think going to be the exact same thing that uh, Quaritch is going through. Where it's like he yes. he right now is just like oh yeah look at me I'm like super powered guy I got I'm I got this big Navi body and I'm here to fight for the humans but eventually he's gonna be like no you know what this is this is this place is pretty cool it's pretty cool yeah well and so yeah. then him and him and Spider obviously are then the other very obvious bridge that would be yeah. slowly being built which is effectively you have a human living in the Navi camp who is all about the Navi and then you have a avatar living in the human camp who's all about the humans. And right. so like, you know, cross yeah, multiply there, yeah. and divide, divide like that's where you get the harmony. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, maybe. Exactly. Maybe, yeah. Um <clears throat> so it'll it'll definitely be exciting and thrilling I think to see how the story expands, how it unfolds and I I suppose whether or not like even Jake uh, would stay at the center of it. It, uh, I mean, I suspect that he does just because he's, you know, thus far been the main character. Right. Um, I, I was almost surprised at the end that he was just like, we're sea people now. This is it. This is where we belong. That's it. I, yes. Okay. Yeah. I was going to ask you about this exact thing. Cause I was also, I was like, okay, if this is the way of water, the next one's probably going to be like the way of fire. Right. Yeah. Something <laughs> like that. Um, which I guess it could still be like, we need to go to the volcanoes in the South or something. To, yes. Yeah, you know, right, like yeah. you can still do that. And it's like, oh, where as it turns out, they have, Different type of flying raptors that can I swim know, in I know. lava. And we've all got like our little like uh, go-to animal creature companion things. I did think it was very cool that the the water navi had these like slightly different like adaptations, like the kind of like finned. Yeah, uh, like they had hands like hands and arms. Genuinely and evolved differently. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I agree with you. It was it was definitely interesting that they wanted to like plant this seed of allegiance that like that the Sully family is now rooted. This is it. We are water people now. We're, 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 we're sea people. We're getting the boat. <laughs> so that's it. Let's do it. Oh, man. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, so that'll be, that'll be an interesting one to see as well, or whether or not, like, the next plots of the next movies would be something along the lines of being introduced to, like, potentially a fire camp or an earth camp or whatever. Um, yeah. I guess the earth camp is probably the first one. I guess, I, yeah. The I, forest people. I guess you could have, like, forest... Sky, well, they already kind of call the humans, like, sky people, so maybe there's that. But you could... Yeah, I guess you could very easily do fire with, like, volcanoes or something like that. Well, so my, my, um, my then, question would be, like, is there a world where you think the antagonists or the, the conflict, really, more than anything else, is not between sky people and Na'vi? Oh, for at, sure. At I have definitely thought they're, like, at some point before we get... Like, if every single movie is just the exact, like... Navi, oh look, the, we we are doing a thing, and the people want to do a thing, and we don't want them to do a thing. So there's a big fight, and then the Navi win. Like that's gonna get boring by the fifth movie. Mm -hmm. You think? I mean, maybe I don't know. But like, it, it occurred to me it, as a very real possibility that there's some sort of like Navi civil war at some point. Sure, sure. Yeah. Like, in, I mean, I could certainly even see a world where 
some Navi are starting to live a lot more harmoniously with the Sky people as they just, like, at some point in time, and this is the other thing, too, is that, like, the amount of time it takes to get from Earth to Pandora is years in space. Right. And so it's like, at some point in time, if Earth has just sent the ships, they're coming. Right. Like, one way or another. Right. Like, they're already in motion. It and seems so like they must be basically sending them almost nonstop, too. Because the other thing I keep wondering, like, watching the movies, like, where are you getting the resources? Which it, I guess you could just be mining on planet, because it's, you know, a completely untapped planet, effectively. But it seems like they just have almost unlimited amounts of technology and ships and stuff. Like, the ships, it seems like it would be hard to build on planet. It does. I don't know. It, well, I mean, they showed you the one ship, or the one scene, like, where the thing comes down, blasts the forest around it, the gates open, and literally these massive, like, bulldozers just roll clean off. Yeah. Which is definitely, <clears throat> like, a payload issue as far as, like, transporting stuff to space is concerned. Yeah. Because things of that mass and size probably just don't get like you can't lift them off earth you can't rocket them into space they're too big you gotta you gotta assemble them in space it went up in parts built in space sent that's entirely possible i could see that being a much more plausible explanation <laughs> but also this is a world where they can send human minds into you know navi avatar bodies and also just preserve your memories on a data chip and upload you later to a different body so there is that know, okay <laughs> here's here's a question for you though speaking of resources speaking of this is that in the first movie of course there was the not so cleverly named unobtainium mm. Which is like this, like mineral that they're using that's like incredibly valuable or whatever. In this movie, we discover that these whales have a unique, like, like brain jelly, bra brain jelly mm -hmm. inside of them that can stop mortal aging. Um, yeah, or they said stop human aging, like just stop it. Yeah, which is yeah. that's pretty <laughs> unbelievable. That's in pretty terms unbelievable. Of like, what what does that mean? Like as a plot device. Moving yeah, forward. like they because just like shot that as an arrow into the future. Like, who knows? Who knows? Eh. Maybe, right. maybe that's like, yeah, we're a hundred years into the future now. I'm like, Navi just live forever, but this human, she has been around forever, it, or right. something like, like that. Yeah, you that know? like this, this, this bad guy will not die because they can't. Because they can't. Oh, that that's entirely possible. I could see, I could see there being a situation where the humans decide that it's not worth attacking any more of these whales, which. Man, that scene in itself was so upsetting it to was, watch. Yes. Like it was very um I don't even know. I mean, I, I know that it is the actual real way, I believe, in which like poaching is done. Uh like with the inflatables and stuff, mm -hmm. like which is kind of just sad in its oh, own yeah. right. It's all but terrible. Yeah. yeah. Um but that whole sequence, especially the fact that like you would just realize that these like, are super intelligent creatures, like capable of like all this type of stuff, and like it just had its baby that it's been trying to have for like years and stuff. Everything about it was very, uh, very upsetting. But yeah, so you like, is it possible that this like tube, this one tube that they have, will be like the only tube that that there will be, and then yeah, like some villain of the future ends up getting one, and like it, you, you can't like defeat that villain because yeah. they have access to the brain jelly. To the tube. I don't know. It seems like they've been collecting the jelly for like a while. Like I, I guess that's so. right. That's true. Cause they, that's what they keep saying is they like, they've got like the quotas and everything. Yeah. I got so. quotas to meet. Right. Yeah. Okay. The, even the, like we've got quotas to meet stuff like okay, that. It seemed like the whole operation effectively was now down to like, he's like, this is what's paying for everything here. Yeah. Is this stuff. And it surprised me then that, like, if this is the whole operation, if this is, like, your new number one resource on planet, that, like, the, the, that Quaritch is allowed to just come in and, like, take control of his ship. It's like, you don't, like, your mission to hunt down this one dude doesn't seem nearly as important as these guys, like, whaling business. That is a good point. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, that, that could just be, like, another one of those things where it's, like, like, for plot reasons, the vendetta takes precedence over otherwise the entire reason for human occupation of this entire planet. Yeah, right. I guess, I guess there's also just the like, well, who's going to do anything about it? Like, we're the people with the guns. Right. You know? Well, so, so th there's I, that. I did wonder about this because it does seem like they come and like land on the ship as it's pulling out. Like, do they just commandeer it? Because like the other thing too is like if the general had given word to that ship captain like hey you are to do like whatever this guy asks yeah 
like it's like he wouldn't keep going on about the quotas and stuff. Like, like right. it would just it does, be his mission. I guess they do, but at some point it does seem like maybe he would call the general and be like, uh, um, hello, um, I know... <laughs> A question for you. There's this guy who wants to like hunt down this like one dude. He says it's really important, but like, how like how important are we talking here? Because like I got quotas. You I got know what I, I mean? got I got it's eighty million. That's for like one, for eighty one, two. million a day over here or more. I don't know how effect, how efficient they are. Right, but yeah, uh, yeah. It it just seemed like that was a that I don't like. I also maybe don't understand Quaritch's mission. Like, why he's been set with it. I'm like, how important is it to the humans that Jake Sully is dead? You know? That's an... <clears throat> right. Again, great question. Yeah. And it's like, maybe, maybe this is where, like, you needed more of a situation where he was, like, specifically <clears throat> tasked with the job of going to do certain things on Pandora. And then when he gets there and he finds the tablet with the information about how his human self was killed. Yeah. That he, like, sort of goes rogue a little bit like yeah. it's possible something like that could have helped explain the rest of it just a little bit more like yeah. like he's there for this purpose and accidentally stumbles across his old walker and when he does he's like wait a second like what the what what like that's not cool like all right new mission new mission guys new mission we're doing it yeah but it seems like i guess i guess you could say like ever since the sky people reland on pandora like Jake has been effectively leading raids against them. True. And like, yeah. Yeah, we would like you to get rid of him because he's a problem. But then like he leaves. So it's like, okay, so problem solved. Yeah. It's like, he's <laughs> right? no longer. Yeah. Right. Like that's, that's even like what the general seems to be saying. He's like, he's doing it with like military efficiency. It's like Jake's training as like a military, like officer or whatever is giving him like really, really good positioning. And, and especially his role within the Navi people too. Like, they're doing, like, they're way too effective at this. Like, we yeah. need him to not be the problem. But then, like, he's not the problem. He leaves. He leaves. Um, so it's just, like, um... Yeah. Like, because otherwise it seems like... Like, if, if once he leaves, it's like, okay, no problem. The humans seem like they are doing just fine establishing the city. Right. Or whatever. Without... And, it's, and if, like, if he leaves and they're not hunting him anymore, then, like, just, just keep building, right? Like, that's not really a concern. Like, the main thing you're here to do isn't to hunt down this one guy. Right. But it seems like the general... The other guy, the, the colonel, has been, like, sent there ahead of time for this problem before it was even a problem or something. I don't know. Maybe, maybe they were just like, oh, good thing you're finally here. We do, in fact, have a mission for you. It's this guy. Turns out he's the very one who killed you. What are the odds? What? <laughs> What's up with Man. that? Use it. Use it. Use that. <laughs> yeah, which he does. Yeah. So um, it does seem like they utilize way too many resources to try and hunt him down. It does. It yeah. does. Yeah. <clears throat> Although, uh, at the same rate, it seems like... Uh, which, it, and it's sort of like this circular problem of, like, at the same time, Jake, like, leaves the people, and it's like, but then he just brings the threat to a new set of people who do suffer consequences, like, heartily? Yes. And it's like, well, I'm not sure you did any good, but maybe in his mind, he's like, if I just leave, they won't hunt me, because I won't be a problem anymore. Um, but then, obviously, they do anyway. They, yeah, well, and the problem, too, is, like, yeah, you even, it felt like one of the these issues where, they like, they didn't know how to bring the threat to the new place but ultimately it's the situation with with kira where she's like underwater and has like the seizure which was really crazy to watch i yeah. felt like that was a pretty intense like like scene um and they pretty much have to call norm who's like the the tech guy medical yeah. guy medical officer back from he's the your other red place. herring kiri's father character yeah for sure for yeah. sure they definitely had like that little i thought i thought that was funny that they were even like in movie speculating <laughs> yeah, as to, like I, who it was it was like the the movie was almost like you should be asking this question because it matters it does it, matter it does matter it's AWA, yeah um but so basically i think he's the one who pretty much like gives the whole thing away so like, yeah. this one medical mission which and another is like another one of those moments where it's like was it was this thought out perfectly because you know, he gets there, he's not really able to do anything, and then the village leader of the Sea People is pretty much able to immediately come over and use, like, her brand of medicine to solve the problem. Yeah. And it's like, well, guys, did you need to call, did you ask your host yeah. if they could help at all? How fast did he get there that, like, in the meantime, she wasn't even trying? Right, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like, even, it, that that's where I felt like, as I kept thinking about the movie after the fact, it's like, maybe don't get too caught up in the plot. Because, like, if you do, you're going to find yourself, like, 
There's some like teeny tiny plot holes that they put in there that's just like, yeah, you know what? We just want, here's what we want. Here's what we want, big boat fight. Can we okay? all agree on the fact that, yeah, that like, we, we want the battle we want happen. We want the big boat fight, all right? Yeah. This, is, this is gonna be crazy, it's gonna be awesome, all right? Which, dude, gave me total claustrophobia, though. Like, oh. especially when uh, they go down like the hatch and they're like inside uh, of the ship yeah. as it's like capsizing, I mean, it's just it, like. It was kind of funny, because as I'm watching, I was like, man, I'm getting such like Titanic vibes right now. And I was like, oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Camera. That makes sense. And it, makes uh, sense. it is the same person, literally, and he's using the same tricks, and it is working. All right, yeah. yeah. That being said, so this reminds me, like, it happened during that scene and also at the very beginning of the movie when uh, the, the sergeant dude is traveling through space. Um, I actually got, like, like motion sickness a couple of times. Oh, really? Where, like, yeah, like, the whole scene is, like, sort of, like, turning in front of your yourself, and you're so, like leaned in mm -hmm. um it sort of happens to me like on like rides at at like amusement parks that use like the screen thing oh and yeah like, they, they like simulate that like dropping motion or whatever right um i had a little bit of that in the beginning and at uh, different times throughout the movie where it was almost like the everything would get like flipped on you and you're sort of like Whoa. oh boy <laughs> 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 like i don't have zero g um, so that was just like one of those like interesting takeaways for like the 3D viewing experience that I thought yeah. was kind of interesting. But I would say it was fairly limited to just a few small occasions as well. Yeah. Um, okay, so beyond all of that, do you have any other like major notes about the movie? Oh man, let's see. We talked about like sort of yeah, the minor quandaries there. Um, we've touched on sort of like the little outcast theme throughout. The other big one is like family. Yes. Um, which I felt like they hit on a couple of different levels. Obviously you had like Spider and Quaritch, you have this like inner intersecting family problem where they each sort of represent the other side, but as the other race. Yes. Which is interesting. Then you have like, um, you know, the Sully family motto of like, the Sully stick together. It's our greatest strength and weakness or something. Right, yeah. Yeah. Um, but then you have like the, the overall like greater, even greater theme of like, all the Navi in general are just sort of family in one sense or another. And then you had like the, what are the whales called? Gosh, I'm never gonna remember it. The Tulkoon are like an extension of the Water Clan family yes. as well. And so like all these all these different ways in which like family were. And it's like, oh, if you actually think of like these whales as family and that like you're murdering their kids by hunting them, it's like, that, is way, uh, that does put it into like a weirdly different, more personal, uh, I don't know, what's the word? Um, Context. Like, yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But then, yeah, okay, so the other thing I thought was kind of interesting is, like, you and I are really big fans of, like, Ted Lasso here. Yeah. Like, just outside of, you know, the conversation that we're having right now, which revolves a lot about relationships with fathers. Yes, it does. Um, and I also felt like this movie seemed to also definitely be, like, touching on that subject as well, where, like, Jake is sort of finding himself in this, like, odd position between, like, you know, he's got like his military upbringing, like he is in very military-esque environments with his family. And so he is like good as like a drill sergeant, but like maybe like struggling a little bit to like communicate like with his kids just as like, as just a father. Yeah, there's like this scene at the beginning where Natiri is talking to him and she's like, it's like, you're hard on them. And he's like, I'm their dad. And he's like, <laughs> as if like, <laughs> that's like an obvious response. Like, I'm, it's my, I'm their dad. So it's my job to be hard on them. And it's like, you can like, the way they deliver it, you can just sort of like, it sort of feels like that doesn't make sense. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Like you said, it, that was an answer you said. <laughs> Those are words. Those, Those are words you chose to respond with right now. <laughs> this, this stuff happens all the time, though, where I think a lot of times people will give a response that sounds logical. And, like, because you're not even thinking to question whether or not it made sense, you just sort of allow it to make sense in your brain. Yeah. And it's like, oh, yeah, sure. Okay. That's right. a response. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fine. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, I agree. And so, like, that's, that's another interesting one as well because, obviously, like, with his youngest son, he's having this situation where it's like, he is very much um, showing characteristics of Jake himself, which yeah. is sort of like a very uh, like determined, hard-headed, a little bit rash, a little bit impulsive uh, nature in the name of like attempting to do good. Right. Um, and which is pretty much like what we see Jake doing, you know, through like a lot of the first movie as well. And it, it is, it's kind of like a fascinating uh, like parenting perspective, which is almost like seeing characteristics of yourself in your children 
and thinking of them as like not good characters. Yeah, it's like the things about yourself you don't like. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But like he ends up basically being extremely hard on his son for being very similar to himself. Right. Um, yeah. Which it's like, I don't even know if like, <clears throat> if that is or intended to be like a major piece of like theme that we're, that we're taking away from the story or if it's just sort of like a piece of like speculation in general that like can happen in, in life or situations like this. Yeah. Um, so that, that's something that I guess I'm a little bit curious to see as time goes on, as I think we're probably almost definitely going to see, uh, relationships between each of the various kids and their parents, uh, continue to grow in terms of importance, you know, cause you're going to have, um, I Kira, think, yeah, who's, right. who's like obviously like adopted into the family mm-hmm. and her lineage is certainly going to be, of some significance at some point in time. Yes. Um, obviously you've got spider whose lineage is now going to be very important. Uh, you've got the youngest son who is now going to like be sort of quasi stepping in the the oldest son now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then the youngest daughter. Yeah. Took took who didn't have a particularly like, yeah, they're setting her up for the future for sure. Right. That's like, that's like, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got it. Well, we, we have to establish you now, but you'll be a big deal later. We promise you're going to have a connection with fire. Or something, oh, you know? Ooh, yeah. Exciting. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So everybody's going to have something that continues and it'll be curious to see whether or not that's a, a theme that they continue to carry out though, is, is sort of this like relationship between like children and their parents and how it impacts the way that they then like, I think uh, it will because I think even world. leading into like the, the, ne- these four movies that'll like round out the franchise, they were like you know it it'll be like at its core about the sully family okay and like, it's about like the family itself and like whatever adventures they get into sure or whatever whatever nonsense okay. uh, battles <laughs> bat- whatever you know battles right like, maybe kill members of the family Ugh, that was that sad was, it was sad it was i did sad. not think they were gonna get straight up like it was that i will say what they surprised me there i did not think they were going to kill one of the family members i didn't either uh yeah. and it was one of these moments and i was actually watching like as it happened there's like the scene where you can see him like jump into the water in the background it was like he didn't seem like he was moving very good i there. know yeah i was like i'm pretty um, sure he got hit but sure enough <laughs> yeah and then it was like it was like is that the case or was it just sort of like like ah we're sort of at the end of the movie the animation budget sort of like dropping off it's, he got in the water that's what's important it's like yeah. no 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 he got shot he yeah, got shot okay yeah um yes yeah, so that was that was pretty that was pretty jarring um otherwise though i mean yeah like for me i i like I walked out of the movie and I was like super jazzed by it. I thought that it was like, I thought it was a really, really, really cool movie, a very cool experience. I would definitely like, you know, I even got home and I was like, Allie, like either we go together or like, I will like watch Addison and you can go and like see it. Um, but like, I, it's like, it is something where it's like, you should see it. I, that's yeah, what I was, I told Matt the same movie. thing. I was like, I think you should see it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like it's good. Like you're going to want to see it in theaters. You're going to want to have the experience. It was really cool. Very fun, um, yeah. So, so how do you score it? I, this is—I was even thinking about this. Like, I don't even know because I feel like I've given pretty high scores to some other movies this year, and I feel like I need to like readjust my uh, ranking thing because, like, I don't feel like it was like a 100 out of 100 or anything. But um, that's that's my problem. It, it, yeah. Like to the letter that I'm facing is that like. If you wanted to know how I felt about how it looked, I would give it a 100 out of 100. Yeah, I, I think really it was it. that good uh, in terms of like the visuals, the 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 plot, and like the sort of like some of the holes, some of the exposition, some of the rest of it. Like it's like it's all a means just to let you continue explore the world. Is, right. is the justification that I'm willing to allow it. Right. Um, and there, there's a certain amount of just like suspension of disbelief or whatever. It's like okay, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, We're good right, it. yeah. It's like they, certainly they could all learn how to hold their breath that long, <laughs> quickly. That's fine. That's, That's like, it's one of those where it's just like like you're watching them and you're like, I like can hold their breath like really long without any training. And it's like, but 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 they are like eight feet tall, so they probably have like really big lungs to begin with. So it it, it, like, it stands the reason that like just just literally like put put a, a navi individual in a tank and a human individual in a tank that the Navi would be able to hold their breath longer. Right, it does like, seem like I, that is probably I, just true. Right. I can believe that just like out of the gate, they can hold their breath for like two or three minutes. Like that's fine. And then like with some real training, because you grow up in a water society, you can do it for like six or seven or whatever. Right. Plus then they have those, those angel wing things that were just like, now you can breathe underwater. It's like, why don't you just give those to everyone right away? I know. What yeah. was the problem? You want to be useful? That, that, <laughs> that. Um, 
I, I will say throughout the movie though, I kept finding myself holding my breath and I don't know if that was like an intended goal of like some of these moments, but it was like, they need air. I, I need air yeah. and I have it. <laughs> um, so anyway, I, I felt like in the end, I would give it a 91. A nine, that is about where I was at. I was thinking like, yeah, like 90. Okay. Right yeah. there. Um, yeah. And I, I think that, that it, it's like, I would say it's like a strong 91 too. Like it's, it's definitely something where it was like, it was really, and it's, that's like the point of going to the movies is like this, this like opportunity. Like yeah, to that's like what be I would like, say. Like, I'd like, I don't know what I've scored anything else this year. I think I've put other stuff in the nineties, but I would just say like, this was the coolest experience I've had at the movies all year yeah. easily. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's the thing. Like, I mean, there was the, the couple of scenes there, like where Kira is like uh, using all the bioluminescent, like underwater, like nudie bronx or something to like guide the way. And I was just like, God, this is so, it is so pretty. It is yeah. so cool. Like just to like, yeah. just to see it. Like, that's, I feel like it's like, it's cool that I just get, it's like looking at the Grand Canyon, you know, it's like, right. it's like, it's always there. Like at any point in time you can go and see it. Like it's always there. And yet when you do, it's like, man, <laughs> you know, like that's how it was. It's just like, I can't believe what I'm seeing right now. Yeah, it was, it, it was, it was such a different feeling movie watching it. I thought like all like the filmmaking techniques, they have such a grasp on like the 3D and stuff. Like, I don't know if you noticed this while I, while you were watching, but like um, uh, they did this thing where like there, there's almost always something like up in the foreground. I, I like, did Whether it's that, like yeah. water or like a bar or something, but like that is like very present and it adds this like immense depth to the shot and like gives it this like extra sense of immersion like like it's right like you're right here next to the thing like this is in your peripheral vision or something right yeah yeah, yeah. so i i don't know i i mean it, it's it's all really cool it is worth seeing in 3d which again like we're not big 3d people we haven't seen anything else in 3d that we've reviewed over the past several years yeah, no um and this is the this is like the time that it is worth yeah. doing do doing it in that. 3d um, for and sure. I, and I, yeah, otherwise just seeing it in theaters, seeing it on the biggest screen yeah, you can possibly see, yeah, find. Yeah, d definitely try and see it in 3D if you can and try and find the biggest screen you can. There you go. Uh, Cause that, that is gonna just make it that much better. And uh, yeah, it was cool. It was cool. It was cool. Anyway guys, if you have already seen it or if there's anything that we didn't talk about that you'd like to hear us talk about, be sure to let us know in the towel section down below. But otherwise until next time, bye. bye.